Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 52. This episode is Shelby Young, who is fantastic. Uh, we cover all kinds of stuff because she's done so many things, and a variety of things as well. Uh, we talk about her being from Florida. Uh, I live in Florida, so we bonded over how awful snowbirds are at driving. <laughs> we, uh, I think we figured out why there's tennis balls on uh, old people's walkers, so that's a little little fun discussion. Um, and then we just go through her insane body of work from working on Freddy, Freddy Prince Jr.'s sitcom, which is great, um, to the social network, to uh, hashtag hacked is another thing, guys. You have to check this out. It's on YouTube. Um, it's so good, and she's so great in it. And then, of course, we, uh, we, we talk about American Horror Story and uh, all the work that she's done there. And then we get into Forces of Destiny, she is amazing as Princess Leia. I cannot recommend the show enough. I cannot recommend any of her work enough. Um, she's just great, and you're going to hear that in this episode. So, uh, you know, without further ado, please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 52, with Shelby Young. Theme song time. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How's your day going? I'm just getting started recording some auditions, and that's that's about all I've gotten up to so far. That sounds about right. That yes. Is, that is that is like ninety percent of being an actor auditioning. Yep. Ninety nine percent, honestly. <laughs> yeah. And then when you're on set, it's just waiting. Lots yep. and lots of waiting. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I like the voiceover world because you don't wait at all. You go in, you do it, and you're done. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Right. Uh, you're in L.A. Yes, I am. Right on. Right on. You're not from there, I'm assuming. No, I'm. Uh, I'm from Florida originally. Um, what? What part? Yeah, from Boca Raton. Oh, I, I live in Naples. Oh, you do? Oh, no way. That's awesome. Yeah, you know what that is. <laughs> I do, indeed. <laughs> That's so funny. I know people are always like, what's Boca? And I have to say, it's an hour from Miami. And they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I do the same thing. I'm like, where's Naples? I was like, go to Miami and then go directly to the other coast. It is a, stri <laughs> is a straight line. Amazing. We have, we have that in common that we live in places with old people. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. I was the only kid that lived in my neighborhood growing up. So I hung out mainly with old folks. And, you know, yeah. it was great. That's, Learned a lot. There you go. That sounds about right. A little character yeah. study. <laughs> What is it? What's it like living in Boca? Because I know Naples. It's like a weird thing where half the town is like super ritzy, and then the other yeah. half is where like the regular people live, and it's yeah. like sects of of areas, little communities of like, oh, here's where the working people go, and then there's Fifth Avenue. See, Boca is pretty much just all ritzy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it was an interesting upbringing because I was going back and forth between uh, Boca and New York when, because I was acting when I was a kid too. Oh. Um, so it was like two completely different worlds. But uh, yeah. yeah, I lived like, uh, my mom and I, because we were back and forth so much, we didn't have our own place in Boca. So we would stay with my grandparents when we'd be there and they lived in a country club. So it was all very. Makes sense. Very, very ritzy. And yeah, I just remember big hair and long nails and thinking like, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> There's just beehives everywhere. What? Exactly. What's happening? <laughs> well, because it's all, it's all, it was mainly like snowbirds. So it was the same thing where people were coming back and forth between New York and, and Boca, but opposite schedules, I guess, that's, which is funny. That's the best way to go about it because snowbirds yeah. are horrible. <laughs> yep. <laughs> don't know how to drive. It's, it, anytime I see, usually a, it's a Boston license plate. I'm like, what? That's what is? So funny. Why do you not know how to drive? <laughs> yeah, it's. I can't honestly complain too much because I was just back in Florida um, over uh, Thanksgiving holiday, and yes, people can't drive, but for different reasons. Yes. In Florida, it's yes, they're they're just kind of slow. Out here, though, in LA. 
people don't know how to drive at all, especially when it rains. It's terrifying <laughs> being on the road because you don't know what the person in front of you is going to do. It's nuts. <laughs> what is this water? <laughs> exactly. exactly. It never rains. Yeah. I, I always hated when like the the uh, turning signal is on for like ten miles. You're like you're just, oh, you just can't hear it. Drives nuts. <laughs> and then you get up to the side of them, and it's an old lady who like can't see over the dash. Like who who's allowing this? What is going <laughs> on? <laughs> I yeah I I have I have views on I feel like after but uh, it's so hard because then it becomes like like discriminatory I guess but I feel like once you're past a certain age and if your prescription is bad enough like you should be tested to have I a driver's totally license I totally agree every like five the second you hit like 60 to 65 every 5 years just go back to make sure you still know how to operate a vehicle yeah, and I, I've i talked to my grandparents about it because my grandma's fine, but my grandpa, thank God, has stopped driving at night. But, like, for a <laughs> while, I was very concerned. And they were offended, though. Like, well, we've had our licenses for so long. That of would course. be so terrible. And in my mind, I'm like, when I'm that old, I want to make sure that I'm still able to drive. Like, I don't want to be – I mean, well, by the time I'm that age, who knows if we're all going to have autonomous cars. But if we don't, I would want to know that I'm not endangering the lives of everyone around me. Same, same. Or you'll just be that ornery. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I've still got it in me. <laughs> it's nuts. It's such a it's such a weird place to grow up surrounded by old people. I, I like yeah. to say it's home of the newlywed and the nearly dead. Yeah, that's Florida. really welcome. I know my my grandparents were so excited a few years ago. I guess the area they lived in is now bringing in the young folks, but oh. the young folks to them are still like forty five. Which yeah, that's not that <laughs> old. But I was I was very uh, I was like oh okay yeah that's so young. I'm that's right. darn wish I was still there. That's right. They better <laughs> not bring their loud music here. <laughs> so funny. Oh man, we uh, my fiance her aunt is this like. 90 year old scottish woman and she's the oh she's God. the same way and like i can still drive it's like you sh you i mean i guess physically you can but you <laughs> definitely shouldn't so she'll like go well, behind people's backs and like rent cars <laughs> i i see i get i do understand though that mindset of like for sure feeling like you yeah i can understand why it'd be annoying to be told like you can't do something because you're getting older that would be so hard to hear i guess but mm -hmm. eh. I'd I'd be I'd be that old guy. You're not taking my keys and just run. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never catch me. Use my walker to defend myself. Oh yeah. <laughs> with the, you gotta have the tennis balls. Do you th do you oh. think the walkers come with tennis balls, or do you think they put them on themselves? Let's, I let's dive into this. Don't know actually. I'm not sure. You know, because they're very they're very prevalent. They're everywhere. They are. That's so funny. I guess, is it just because there aren't, I guess there can't be wheels. That would be a disaster. I've never really thought about this. <laughs> that's that's probably just it. Just so that it can slide easier, I guess. Yeah, is that what the, the it, tennis balls are for? It'd have to be. Because there's like, instead right. of like rubber stoppers, you know, because that would obviously yeah. have ultimate traction. So they would just trip all the time. But then the opposite <laughs> end is wheels where they just get away from them. So you know what? I think we just solved this problem, Shelby. We did. That was it. The, tennis right balls. There. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? So you said you you acted as a kid as well. Yeah, what, what, I, uh, what made you want to be an actress? Ah, uh, man, I don't a, a storm of things. I well, when I was really really little, when I was like three or even younger, I think just for fun one day, my mom saw an ad in the paper for a pageant like in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. and she was like, "All right, let's let's check this out." And I. I think I borrowed my cousin's dress. It wasn't like a full makeup hair thing for me, but I ended up winning that pageant and Yay. then going on and having to compete in all these other pageants, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we stopped pretty quick though, because my mom said it was very much like toddlers and tiaras where moms were being mean oh, no. to other kids basically. Jeez. Yeah. So not, not a world we wanted to be in, but the judges for some of those pageants were commercial and uh, modeling agents in Miami. Uh. Smart. Yeah, so they kind of discovered me, I guess. But my mom at the time said no because she thought I was too young. And then I guess I just kept bugging her. I don't remember <laughs> this. This is all. This is all stories I've been told. I literally do not remember a single pageant. So I think my mom did it at the perfect age for me because I'm glad I don't remember. It oh at yeah. All. As far as you know, uh, it didn't happen. It's all doctored photos. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> um. But so there was that. But then I also just was always such a ham in front of anybody pulled out any sort of camera. And I just wanted to be in front of it. And I wanted to be talking. And I did the 
school, we had like a news segment in the morning and we would switch off who was in front of the camera and who was behind the camera. And I'd always beg to be in front of the camera. So it was just <laughs> something I, I knew I wanted to do. Um, so I started with just modeling and commercials when I was young. Um, and then I, at the time, thought I really wanted to do theater. Mm -hmm. So that's why we originally went to New York. Also, it was just a, an easier trip back and forth. Um, oh, yeah. And when I was in New York, though, I ended up booking some independent films and I was auditioning a lot for uh, television, mainly just every Law and Order, because that's all that filmed in New York at oh, the yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, then once I realized that's what I wanted, my agents in New York were like, well, you have to go to California then if that's what you want, because the market for television and, and film is so much more saturated there. Go check it out. And oh, yeah. I've been here ever since. Really? How old were you when you moved to L.A.? Uh, just before I turned 13, so it's been a while. Man. I basically grew up here. Like, I'm from Florida, but I, I consider myself pretty native to L.A. Yeah, that's fair. Especially that yeah. it's such a, a culture there that you can you can assimilate Definitely. fairly quickly. Definitely. I, I love L.A. for the reason that, like, it seems everyone is just trying to make a thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's just Everybody, got that atmosphere. You know, it is it is a, a city of go getters, which I think is really cool, and I it's it's inspiring to be around. I have like, especially in the past couple of years, I've made a really great group of friends, and everybody makes their own content and is constantly working on either their own projects or or projects that they've booked, and it's just it's a cool energy to be around. Sure, sure. So, what was the biggest uh, thing that you weren't prepared for when moving from New York slash Florida to LA? Because it's very different. It's it is, you know, I was so lucky that so many of my friends moved at the same time. I was, I was homeschooled also, uh, oh, right on. from, yeah, when I was, when I was in Florida, I was in a regular elementary school, but then I ended up <laughs> booking a, a Nickelodeon pilot that filmed in Iceland for a month. What? So yeah, it was for this show called Lazy Town. Um, and it was a Nick, G well, I guess it wasn't Nickelodeon when the pilot went, but the series ended up going to Nickelodeon. And, and fortunately the series went non-union and I'm SAG. So I, I turned down, uh, the show mm -hmm. so I didn't want to be penalized at all, but I did the pilot and my school did not understand how I was leaving for a month and <laughs> just didn't deal with actors in Florida. So we started homeschooling, uh, because of that. And then, um, I, so I, most of my friends were actor friends that I'd made in New York and, and whatnot. And they all, I guess our moms all talked and decided to all move to LA right around the same time. Oh. So I had a little group of friends already, so it didn't feel too daunting. I feel like that would have been the hardest part sure. um, of moving, but I'm trying to think it was so long ago. Um, I, the, I, I liked that it wasn't muggy, <laughs> but yeah. that wasn't anything hard Fair. to assimilate to. Uh, Fair. No winters. No, it wasn't, <laughs> yeah. Right. It, it wasn't a bad move. It, it, it felt pretty, I felt like I belonged pretty quick, so I luckily, yeah, there wasn't really much I had to uh, get used to. Sure, that's fair. That's fair. So going from commercial acting and and things like that, did you was it just any time in front of the camera you were down, or was there like a specific thing I want to be in TV, I want to be in movies, uh, anything like that? Um, when I was a kid, it was everything. Mm -hmm. Um, now I, it's still it honestly is still everything. I love. Yeah, I love you gotta acting. keep your options open. Yeah, exactly. There isn't really a form of acting I don't like. I mean, theater now terrifies me, which probably yeah. means I should Same. do it again. Same. Um, I I used to love it as a kid, and I never felt fear. And now, you know, I can be in a in a studio with God, a hundred people watching me with a camera pointed at me, and I don't really get nervous. But the second I'm on a stage, it's terrifying right. for whatever reason. <laughs> the camera's the I perfect don't know. buffer. <laughs> Right. I guess. Well, I guess the camera makes it so you have that safety blanket of knowing if you mess up, they'll call cut and you go again. For sure. Whereas on a stage, you can't really do that. That is true. And yeah. Terrifying. I, but Very. I was, and, oh, you, sorry. What were you saying? No, no. You're going. Oh, I was just going to say, no, I, I, uh, I was on a soap when I first came out here. Uh, yes, well, you not were. when I first came out here, but. It was indeed for a few years, but I, and what I, the point I was making with this, because now I'm losing my <laughs> Oh, we'll get there. Off, <laughs> is that with the soap opera, that was in a way almost like theater where yeah. you couldn't mess up because you only get a certain amount of takes because we're filming an episode a day. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I feel like I shouldn't be that scared of theater because I know I, I have the capacity to memorize a lot of lines and not mm-hmm. screw them up. But still, that thought just like it just it my heart starts racing. Sure, sure. Sure. As long as it races in the in the right direction, <laughs> you can channel it. <laughs> I think about that all the time. Like Will Smith did, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but he's never done a play before. And I was like, well, oh. I mean, it's kind of a play. You're in front of a live audience. You know, you're doing yeah. you're doing your thing. They just put a camera in the middle of you. Yeah, no, it's so true. I've I've only ever done a uh, one uh, live taping for a sitcom, and it was a Freddie Prince Jr. sitcom years ago. Oh, I've seen it. And yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yes. No, we're, Shelby, we're gonna dive in. I love this. I love this. <laughs> we're we are di- we are diving in. Welcome to the interesting podcast with Brian. <laughs> we're gonna great. talk about everything you didn't know I was going to talk about. Man, I'm excited and a little nervous, but That's mainly right. excited. It's okay. There's no live audience. right but uh, so i always like to ask do you remember the first big role you ever booked uh yeah when i was um five (laughs) seven well no because i I really just did commercials until i was around i think i was eight i think i was eight years old and it was my first uh tv appearance and i did this showtime show called going to california and it was actually, it was really funny because I was playing a little pageant girl whose uh, mom had made her get a nose job uh, <laughs> because I had a little bump on my nose. And I just remember being on set was the coolest thing ever. And I was trying to hang out like this. I actually remember this isn't just stories. I, I was sure. trying to hang out with all the adults. And I, I, I just also remember there was a lot of cursing. Like there's a scene basically... <laughs> Going to California, I don't remember the whole show, but the the main actors are trying to find their friend, and they stop off at all these different states cross-country making it to California because that's where he is. And so Uh most of the episodes took place in different states. And so for the Florida one, there was a hurricane that hit, so they're stuck in this, like, ritzy medical facility. And so that's where I am. And I just remember I'm in this, like, all-white little nightgown, and they think I'm a ghost at the beginning of the episode, which I loved. (laughs) I thought it was so funny. So yeah, that was that was my first real acting experience, and I, I loved it. Sure, sure. Being on set's pretty nuts when you got you know a hundred people all doing things around, and it's like now you play pretend over there. Yeah, it's I remember cool. I had a really hard time pretending to be asleep. That was what was the hardest. <laughs> they said I kept I kept reacting to them talking because they were cursing a lot, and I never heard curse words because it's showtime. So I was really excited. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That is awesome. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I need to write these down for later. <laughs> right? No, apparently I uh, <laughs> I went up to the director. This this is just a story I don't remember yeah, at all. But apparently the director at lunch. And I was like, why do they keep calling her a cat? And he's like, what? And I'm like, they keep calling her a pussy, pussy cat. Why do they keep saying that? And he was like, go go talk to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that it was pretty, pretty funny. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, and and I love that your first role is something to do with the pageant. You're like, I trust me, I'm experienced. All right, I know what I'm doing here. I, I think that's why they booked me. They could they could sense how uh, real the character was. Yeah, for exactly. me. <laughs> you, you became that character, and, and yep. that's, that's when we knew that you were destined for great things from that point of view. <laughs> She's so serious, like she can't even sleep. She's just so here. I love it. <laughs> That's so funny. That is great. I'm glad you mentioned uh you you mentioned Freddie. Because yeah. that was great. I've actually I remember that episode and then I was looking I was like Shut Freddie in the I, I, and you, he made you hate yourself. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. Wasn't he like was... wasn't he dating your he's dating your mom, right? Or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, it was called <laughs> oh my phone is on. It's called a uh, Freddie and the Hot Mom, and he yep. is trying to date my mom. But I made a deal with my mom that she wouldn't date anyone. Um, so he was like trying to win me over. And then Chloe, who plays his niece on the show, we actually became good friends after that. Uh, is jealous because I'm stealing her uncle's attention. Yeah, it's so good. It's a, yeah. and, for, and this is Freddie Prince Jr. We're talking about, like, arguably the most famous person of the '90s. Oh and- yeah. That's that's pretty great. That's pretty yeah, great. Yeah, he was great and then uh uh Brian Austin Green played his best friend on the show yes. and he was a riot. It was it was a really nice fun set. I, I had a blast on that one. Was that a sound stage as well in front of people? Yeah, that was WB. That was the only one the only sitcom I've done that ended up having a live taping. Right, right. How was that? Um it was 
fun. I remember that they were rewriting a scene that took a while because some jokes just weren't landing. And so that felt like it lasted so much longer than it probably did. It was probably only 10 minutes and I was just standing up there waiting on set and <laughs> like just nervous knowing that there's people watching, even though, you know, the host is playing games with them and having them answer questions to win gift cards or whatever they do with those live tapings. Um, sure. And, but I was just like super nervous, but it was really, it was a really cool learning experience to have to change dialogue on the spot like that. Um, oh yeah. So I, I, yeah, it was really, it was really it was really fun, and, and I learned a lot. It sounds kind of cool. What, what are rehearsals like for a sitcom? We rehearsed, um, I'm trying to remember because, God, that was so long ago. I, I did that when I was 14, I think, 14 or 15. So three years um, ago. Yeah, just several <laughs> several years. Yeah, just like um, four. <laughs> but I think, right, um, I think we rehearsed for three days. And then we filmed some scenes without the audience. And then um, we filmed the majority with them there, which I think the taping was on a Friday. I remember that being a cool thing. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, we just, we would just rehearse nonstop and block it out um, and make sure that we were hitting the jokes correctly with the right inflection, all that fun stuff. And I had really never done, because I I did Everybody Hates Chris, but that was a single camera comedy. So it's a lot more grounded. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was my first foray into the multicam world of that big over the top kind of humor, but I I really enjoyed it. Sure, it sounds pretty cool. I have always wondered that though because it is in front of a live audience, and that's nuts. Rewrites like the day of daunting. Yeah, very daunting. And Freddie very. Prince Jr. <laughs> he he was so nice though. Like I was never nervous. I was. I was nervous to meet him. Apparently, this is really funny. I do kind of remember this. I had originally auditioned for the role my friend Chloe booked for the pilot. Every, I think every girl in LA auditioned for that. Sure. And I remember when I was going for the, the producer session, I just didn't think that Freddie would be there for it. I don't know why. But then he walked into the room right before it was going to be my my, uh, my turn to go, and my face turned bright red. <laughs> I was just freaking out. My mom was like, you need to go to the bathroom and splash some water on your face before you go in. <laughs> get it together, Shelby. <laughs> yeah. The, the pageant mom comes back. You get it together. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> that is great. That is great. And then, I'm. you know what? You're doing very well segueing these things. You're making my job a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, Everybody Hates Chris. Hilarious yes. show. How, yeah, how, do you, how do you keep it together on a set like that? Uh, it's hard just when you're in the moment and when you're really focused it's it's pretty easy to I shouldn't say pretty easy I definitely lost it a couple times but (laughs) unless someone does something completely unplanned and ridiculous which will happen sometimes Mm -hmm. where they'll change it up and you don't see it coming and you can definitely lose it then but for the most part you've gone over it quite a few times and it's just you're in that moment so it just isn't it, i don't want to say it isn't as funny in the moment but it isn't it, once you watch it back it's hilarious but you're sure. just not in that mindset of like make me laugh that makes sense that same thing sense. with like horror movies they're not scary yeah. on the set because you see like it's... 10 people around you and it's all lit up and the director's like yeah just just go ahead and you're like oh there's no music <laughs> there's no color i get it exactly exactly that is great have you have you ever like uh busted a take because of something like that on anything you've worked on i mean you're a professional oh, so i get that this is a yeah. loaded question <laughs> no absolutely i'm 100 i'm i'm still human if something is super funny or you know it wasn't on this but um speaking of horror movies segueing again this oh, horror yeah. movie i did um nightlight there was a scene where i was supposed to be passed out under a tree and as i'm laying there I feel something like crawling down my shirt (laughs) and I screamed and smacked my chest. Nothing I could have done because it turned out to be a stink bug. Oh no. So, or so I just remember, uh, Tara, the, the, um, the hair makeup woman spraying me with all of these different, it was cologne and perfume and just like everything they could. I smelled so bad. <laughs> oh God. Whatever they can do to mask the smell. <laughs> yeah. Because it was a mixture. It wasn't even masking it. It was like this disgusting mixture of stink bug plus ax body spray. It was terrible. But <laughs> you know, in instances like that, I've broken a take for sure. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my God. I can't even imagine. <laughs> that went south real fast. 
<laughs> yeah, it was terrifying, though. I just thought it was going to be a spider, which I'm so scared of spiders. So I, I was panicking. Yeah. <laughs> be a professional. Be a pro- Oh, my God. That's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Stink bugs are the worst for anyone who doesn't know. My God. I, I had never experienced that before. I was in the woods in Utah. And they were like, oh, yeah, those are common here. And I was like, oh, great, awesome, love you talk. (laughs) (laughs) Every time someone steps on one, you're just looking around. You're like, all right, who? Who? Who did it? Yeah. (laughs) It smells like, I can't even describe it, like rotting gasoline. Yes, that's that's a good one. That is a good one. There's a lot of skunks here in Florida. And when you're driving down the road, you can be like, yep, there's one nearby. (laughs) Yeah. Here you can tell if it's a skunk or if it's weed, but hey. <laughs> you're right. You were right. So funny. So you, you went on to uh, – you were in Social Network as well. Yes. That's yes, pretty big. I, Aaron Sorkin wrote it. David Fincher directed. David Fincher made Fight Club. It was huge. I know. Fight Club's one of my favorite films. I actually just went to – they did a little uh, – they do these fun things where they'll have an orchestra play uh, to the film, and they did that for Fight Club recently. Yeah, at this at this theater by me, and it was awesome. It was super, super cool. Dude, Fight Club yeah, was the but... first movie I ever saw with a twist ending, so I was uh, I was not me, prepared. It was the Sixth Sense. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that was that was, but Fight Club was up there too. I did not see Fight Club coming at all. The no. ending, oh, that messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. You're like, wait, wait, the whole time, and then when the second time you watch it, you're like, oh. My God, he literally shows up like flashes beforehand. What is happening? I know. <laughs> what is real? Yeah. I, I'm Tyler Durden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. But what was a no. social network like? It was so intimidating, so fun though, and David Fincher was really nice. I didn't know what to expect at all. I was so sure. intimidated walking onto that set, but no, it was everybody was so nice and warm and. We did so many takes, which I was so concerned was me messing up. Even though I knew David Fincher did a lot of takes mm-hmm. and he was known for that, I still was like, man, I must not be getting it. I must not be getting it. But no, I, I, yeah, I had a great time filming that. And it was, I felt the, like the weight of what a big project this was on my shoulders when I was on that set. Cause sometimes I've worked on things that end up being huge, like American horror story. I thought was really cool when I worked on it, but I didn't realize what an impact it would have with the social network. I just knew based on the fact that it, I was being directed by David Fincher. I was like, this is, this is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Um, but I, yeah, it was, it was a full day for that one scene. Um, and it was just intense. It was, it was like, again, like an actor's boot camp kind of thing because his direction, David Fincher's direction was very specific of, um, some technical notes. Like I, I was just talking on a different podcast about this actually, where it was like, raise your eyebrow when you say this line, like things, things that minute, but he knows exactly what he wants. And that's why his movies are so amazing. Cause he, he has those little tiny details picked out. Sure. Sure. I do you, I prefer that. Do you, do you like more freedom? Do, do you like specific pinpointed or do you go by the project? I go by the project. It really depends. Fair. I, um, I like, I mean, I really enjoyed that, but I also like loose sets where you collaborate with the director in the essence of, they kind of let you do your own thing. And even to the point sometimes of, of minor rewrites of the scene, like if you think your character would say something slightly different, but still get that point across, like that's always fun to do too. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. I yeah. just think about like, uh, I remember watching the Spielberg documentary, which is great by the way. Uh, nice. and oh. there was an interview with Liam Neeson and he was talking about when they filmed Schindler's list and mm-hmm. there's this like opening shot when he's just sitting there and his hands in front of his face with a cigarette and the smoke is just kind of coming up. And he said he had a really rough day uh, the first day because Steven Spielberg was like, no, 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 take a puff, wait, let the smoke out, lift your hand up a little bit. And Liam Neeson's like, I'm not a puppet. Like I want to, <laughs> he's like, I want to kind of do my job. And Steven's like, give me a second. I, I just trust me. And then in the movie, <laughs> Spiel, uh, uh, Liam Neeson's like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I see it. Yeah. Nope. Whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you have to trust their vision. You yeah. have to. They're behind the camera, so they, they know what and they they're, see. They're the greats for a reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so going going back to what you said earlier, you were on uh, Days of Our Lives. That's, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, but- yeah, it was super, it was crazy. And I was also working with one of my really close friends for a while, uh, 
uh, Taylor Spritler was one of those kids I was talking about that had lived in New York and then we all kind of moved to LA together. Yeah. And she played um, Mia, who my character Kinsey hated. So it was <laughs> it was real fun to get to be really mean to her on screen and then just be best friends afterwards. You're like, I've also been uh, training for this. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, all the things I wanted to say but I couldn't say and now I can. That's right. You uh, see pain in her eyes. You're like, that, that wasn't in the script. Just roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no not not at all it was it was just super fun and uh it just felt like playing pretend with your friends in a way which is what I love so much about acting is it still feels like that even even now um mm-hmm. but yeah Kinsey Kinsey was a very interesting character she started out as just your typical mean schoolgirl and then developed into this kind of I don't even know how to describe her she just she became kind of the comic relief I think of the teen group mm-hmm. um which I thought was really cool because I think the writers knew that I, I could do comedy and they needed a little bit of lightheartedness because, you know, soaps are so dramatic, um, oh, yeah. which is really fun. But sometimes you need that little pop, which I think is also kind of what um, the Nicole character was for a while, too, which I, I loved. It's always fun to to be a little light, but it was sometimes Kinsey was just so ditzy. It was ridiculous. Sure. Um in in the best way. Um, but yeah, and then she had run-ins with, <laughs> she tried to be a prostitute for a little while, as <laughs> she does. She wanted to be a singer and then a photographer. She dabbled a bit in a few different uh, <laughs> as areas. She, yeah, she helped kidnap, well, not kidnap a baby, but bring a kidnapped, previously kidnapped baby to see her kidnapper. It was a whole, you know, it was a whole thing. Yeah, yeah you had a good run. It was a lot of episodes you did. Yeah, I think I did around like 60, 65, something like that. Sheesh. That's a yeah. th- that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It was it was great. It was it was really it was a really fun time. And then yeah, Kinsey Kinsey moved to Chicago with Chloe. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. Better than a coma, you know. True. True, true. <laughs> Thrown down an elevator shaft, you know. Right. <laughs> Better than the alternatives. And then flash forward, you you mentioned you worked on American Horror Story. Uh yeah. that took off, didn't it? That really took off. That was super <laughs> cool, especially because I was only supposed to be in the pilot episode originally. Really? Um, yeah, the original ending, my character was so scared that she left town. Oh. And yeah, and I was super happy because on my last day of filming, I thought they still had that last scene where they're talking to my friends in it about, like, where where did Leah go? And they say, oh, she left, whatnot. Um, better written than that. This was. <laughs> and... Then they were like, nope, that's a wrap for the day. And I was like, oh, are you going to film that another day? And I forget who I was talking to. Someone on set, maybe the AD winked at me. And they're like, nope, we'll see you again. And I was like, oh, okay. Hey. So. You're still going to be yeah, scared, really... though. <laughs> What'd you say? It's like, you're still going to be scared, though. That we kept Oh, that. yeah. My hair, my, Leah's hair turns white from yep. being so scared. So definitely terrified. But I was, it was so fun to get to play such an awful person in the first episode (laughs) and then that switch of like her character like she's two completely different people so that was really fun to get to do yeah for sure and then so in that show my fiance is like obsessed with american horror story yeah and uh she i remember her like telling me about all these things she's like and then yeah she's so scared her hair turns white so she has to wear this hat and then she (laughs) she had me rewatch these episodes and you got cut in the face pretty good yeah, I got slashed up by the Infantata in the basement. That was so fun to film. Um, unfortunately, the actor who played that role passed away a few years ago. She did. Uh, but he was such a cool guy. Um, working with him was, was really amazing. Um, and I, God, I felt for him on that set because he was in layers of makeup and, and prosthetics for hours. He could barely see. He, could, he couldn't really do anything but sit there and wait for us to film. And he was... He was amazing about it. Like, he was just so cool and amazing. Like, oh, uh, God, can't say enough nice things about him. And uh, it's very tragic what happened. But filming that scene was, was just honestly scary in the moment because the prosthetics were so realistic. Like, we were saying how on a horror set you don't usually get scared. It was terrifying, actually. Oh, yeah, well, it's on you. And you're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was super, super scary. Um uh yeah it was nuts but that whole that whole that whole episode was really fun that fight scene in the school cafeteria with Thaisa was awesome we had stunt doubles for the majority of that but 
we got to get in there and kind of do our little version of it just so they could get the close ups and I had a blast. Sure, sure. How long did that uh face cut prosthetic take to get on? Um, I can't remember. Not too too long. Um I think the first time they built it on my face, but then they had um another piece that they were then able to kind of take on and off. So it wasn't it wasn't too bad. And then for the the, sub, the the rest of the episodes, I have a bandage covering it. So smart. It wasn't. Yeah, it really wasn't too bad. The the longest I've ever spent in a makeup chair for prosthetics of any kind or, or makeup um, was actually that pilot I did as a little kid because um, I, I had prosthetics and they also uh, airbrushed my basically my whole body, my arms, my face, my legs and everything. Um, and I was in that chair for like four hours, I think. Ooh. And then. Night light also, uh, I had to be drenched in blood with cuts and scrapes everywhere. So I think that took probably about two hours. But yeah, not nothing. I've never had an experience yet where you're in the chair for like, God, eight to however many hours. Yeah. I was just watching a documentary of, um, oh my God, why am I blanking on his name right now? Shape of Water. Uh, Doug Jones. Yes, Doug Jones and him talking about how long he's in those chairs for. Oh, I just, yeah. it's crazy. Can you imagine? Oh, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, always think about when you get hungry. <laughs> right? How do you well, I, Oh, that was something else. Another horror movie. I did The Midnight Game. We did prosthetics, and I forgot about this. But, yes, someone had to feed me. <laughs> yep, yep. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey, whatever works. Right? So, and that scene was really – I mean, you got to work with Evan Peters. What was that like? I did. He's great. He was awesome. Um, Just super regular, cool dude. Uh, and super crazy talented as well. So working with him was honestly amazing. Him and Thaisa were just awesome to work with. Sure, sure. That scene was pretty great. Really gross, not going to lie. The, oh, the slashing yes. scene? Yes, it's the sound. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah, I love They came up with it on the spot when they're like, all right, now quietly look to the camera and say, Mommy. And I loved that. <laughs> like, well, yep, this, we this, that'll do. Days. That'll do. Yeah. That was really good. And then you you ventured. Oh oh no! You know something that I just thought of that I have to I have to talk to you about. I've yes, seen uh, hashtag hacked. Oh really? I've awesome! Seen, like a couple years ago, it was just one of those like random YouTube holes that I went to. I was like, oh. "What is this? How fun was that? You got to like be a badass kicking doors and shooting people." Man, that was one of my favorite things I've ever worked on. I oh man, I love doing uh, fight choreography. I I am so not an athletic person in my day-to-day life, but for some reason, if I'm on a set, I can just, I feel confident enough in myself that I can, I can handle making it look semi-cool, um, real life on the set. But I, God, it was such a fun experience, and uh, Ho Song Pak was my fight choreographer for part of it. There was another man as well who, God, I feel so bad that I'm blanking on his name, who was amazing too. But he, Hosong Pak was, I believe it was Street Fighter that he was who they recorded the motions of um, for the game. It was super cool. But yeah, uh, that the, the suit itself that I got to war, that I got to wear for that project that I wore for it was amazing. Looks sweet. I got to have a sick helmet, and I felt I felt way cooler than I am. Like I, <laughs> I was looking at myself in the mirror, and I was like, "Yeah, Shelby, you're a badass." That's right. Yeah, it's quick. Someone take a picture of me, quick. Oh, I took too many pictures. I literally, <laughs> it was bad. I was, I was so into it. But it was, no, that project I loved, and it was for a competition, and I was hoping we'd win because the winner would get to make a feature based off of the short. Yeah. And, oh, I was so bummed because I, I that's a story I would still love to see told. It was such a cool idea, and I loved the sci-fi aspect of it, and I loved that it was two female leads. Yeah, that was And great. there wasn't a romance involved. It was just two sisters trying to save their dad in the most badass way possible, basically, which I think was really a, a cool story. I agree. I agree. And the effects were amazing. Everything about yes. it, I was like, this is this is legit. Tim Baldini was the, the director writer on that, and he, I, I would love to work with him again, and I'm excited to see what he does, because I've, I've watched other little shorts, and, and he, he designed a few things for, I think it was some video game awards, but it was, it was similar effects, and I just love what he like what his ideas are with that oh yeah he killed it killed yeah it. so you like doing you like doing the uh, physical things and then I you do. uh you you dude you worked on dead rising three 
Exactly. That's what I was going to say. That was the closest to mocap in, in film, actually. But yeah, Dead Rising 3 was amazing to work on. That was also another one where I felt way more badass than I am. <laughs> you had the, like, the, the ping pong balls all over you? Like, this is, I've made it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you look you look so dorky in those suits, but it's the best cuz everybody does. So you're no one you're not embarrassed or anything like that. Like it's 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 super fun and it's really freeing in the way that with on camera you have to worry about your hair and mm. your lighting and and to make sure you're in the right place for the right camera angle and whatnot. And with with mocap, you don't have to worry about that at all. You it really is like a hybrid of theater film and voiceover, which I think is just the, the holy trinity. Like it's, it was such a cool project to work on. And Tom Keegan is my favorite, like one of my favorite directors I've ever worked with. He is such a cool guy. And also just his directing style is amazing. He has us do warm ups every day before working with him. Like it, it just to get centered in your body and your voice and you're running around doing all these crazy exercises and it just it really helps get you in that headspace for the day because um, I've worked with him now on a couple of projects and I just I love I love working with him. Sure, sure. How long was that shoot in the recording for for that specific one? That was about I want to say a month and a half. We had a break because wow. we started in December and then we took a break I think like a two week break for the holidays and then came back in January um, I wasn't there for every day mm-hmm. I know Andy was because you're playing as him right. um, but it was God it was just such a cool it was the first time I'd ever done anything like that it's actually what got me back into voiceover oh, right on. Um, yeah because I I had done a little bit of voiceover work in New York when I was a kid. I did um, a lot of the Kellogg's commercials, so I did a, a majority of the, like, silly rabbit tricks are for kids and all the... <gasps> Flashbacks. The char- yeah, <laughs> all the lucky charms, chasing lucky and all that fun stuff. But as a kid, to me, I don't know why I didn't view that as a career path. I just thought that was something fun to do on the side, right. which was wrong (laughs) so so wrong I would laugh at myself if I met my younger self and she said that to me um silly child (laughs) right silly child voiceovers are for everyone um (laughs) but I I did also a couple uh small voiceover projects when I first moved to LA um but just a couple again like radio spots and it just wasn't something I really focused on Mm -hmm. and then after Dead Rising I was like Whoa, 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 whoa! Why haven't I been focusing on this? Why I can absolutely do both. Like this is amazing, and I want to do voiceover now. So Dead Rising, a hundred percent, is what made me uh, pursue voiceover, which I am so happy that I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. What was that audition like? That was just it was like a regular audition, except uh, a lot of the times it, it really varies audition to audition. But yeah. I'd say. 80% of the time, they want you to be static. They want you either seated or standing. And in, in, uh, you can move a bit, but, like, you have a, an area that you need to stay in because they don't have professional camera people mm-hmm. following and filming you. It's just their their uh, other casting uh, assistants helping out kind of thing. Right. Um, but with this one, they really wanted me to use the space and be as physical as possible with the lines because they just, you know, need to see if you're going to be able to do that on set. Right. Um, so it was, I, I was reading with Tom and he was giving me so many notes, which I love. I love when you get notes in auditions, even if oh, yeah. it means so wrong and doing terribly, at least that means that they're willing to like take the time to work with you. Or even if you did something great, they just want to see if you can follow direction and, and change it up. And it's just like playing and it's Absolutely. really fun. Most auditions you go in and I mean, not to fault casting directors because they have to see so many people. There's only so much time that most of the time you'll go in, you'll do it once. They'll say thank you. And that's basically it. So you never really know how you did. But on jobs where you get to play or on on auditions where you get to play, it's just it's a really enjoyable experience. Um, So, yeah, it was it was a pretty long audition. I think it was like a 15 minute audition, which is. Wow. Yeah. Pretty unusual. Um but yeah, I was so excited when I got to work on that. It was, it was crazy. And then the little the head camera headgear kind of situation that we wore for that project was really interesting too. Yeah, we had, yeah, it was it was super funny because uh, I mean you have this little camera that you just have to ignore. It's basically in your line of vision throughout the whole uh, process. But oh, no. you, yeah, you just you get so used to it. Though I was really surprised when I first put it on. I was really nervous that it was going to interfere 
but I just, it became so accustomed to it that I really did stop noticing it, which was great, except for the time that Andy and I had to film a kissing scene and we got our cameras stuck together. <laughs> that was, that was fun. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's when the yeah. real acting comes in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this camera we like, isn't here. Gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do it? Carefully. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's crazy. You've done a ton of ADR work for different stuff as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. How I've do, done a, how do I, you even get into something like that? I kind of fell into it when I well, when I was younger, I did a bit of that um and that was through at the time my voiceover agent had had me take this class mm-hmm. and the woman who was teaching the class was a, an ADR casting director. Oh, so perfect. She started, yeah, she started bringing me in for stuff after that. Um and that was super fun, but then I just kind of fell into it again. It's really a kind of a connections of who you know sort of thing. Always. Um, and being recommended by other people, which has been really very nice of them to do. I, that's also something I really love about the voiceover world. Not to say that this doesn't happen in on camera, but with the voiceover world, there is such this like this this camaraderie where if someone can't do a job or thinks that you are more right for a job or you're also right for a job, they'll recommend you, which is so nice. Oh, yeah. And, you did not get that on camera typically. Yeah, yeah, it's just a different it's a different playing field. Um so yeah, I I've, I've gotten really lucky that I've just made some good friends that are really nice and helpful and cool people that have recommended me for stuff. Sure. You've also got a great voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> facts are facts, Shelby, facts are facts. So, speaking yeah. of voices, we got to talk about Forces of Destiny. Yes, of course. Um what? What was <laughs> what was Dude, you're in Star Wars. I am. It's crazy. It still doesn't feel real. And I still nerd out, I think, more than some fans do. Like, every Good. time I post too much about it because I'm so excited. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I think you're very, very good. Thank uh, you. I, I, I love it. Absolutely. Uh, what was – was that audition – different because usually with star wars everything's secret nobody knows what's going on ever and then you're like oh by the way you're in star wars like what was that That, audition process like it was i had no idea i i knew i had to sound like a younger uh princess leia um so i knew it was star wars related but i didn't know what it was exactly sure i i just didn't i don't i don't even know i i i just did one audition from home and then a few weeks later booked it which was insane Because in my mind, I would always assume something like Star Wars or, or Disney or Marvel or anything like that would be like a huge process. Sure. Um, which I'm sure other projects are. I, I got so lucky with this one. Um, when you're right, you're right. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it was just, man, I cried so hard when I booked it. <laughs> I was freaking out. And of course, I wasn't allowed to tell anyone, but I did call my mom right away because I don't think mom is part of NDAs. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> Agreed. But I, I, yeah, I freaked out to her. And my mom, I love her to death. She's She likes Star Wars, but she's not like a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah. yeah. So she still was really excited for me, but she just didn't get the the weight of what I was telling her. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. You booked another job. It's like, no, mom, you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> she she gets it now. Now that the project's come out and she's seen everything, she's like, "Oh well, this is really cool." Yeah, <laughs> yeah Mom, that's what I was telling you. Man, so what? So you said you it was a young Princess Leia thing. So was it a voice match thing, or like I've heard that like Kat Tabor when she did Padme for the Clone Wars, they were going mm-hmm. for a feel of the character as opposed to like a Natalie Portman impression. Yeah, we didn't really discuss it too heavily because they wanted me to do what I had done in my audition. Uh-huh. Um. But I know I – I'm trying to remember exactly, but I, I focused mainly on A New Hope. Okay. Um, that's kind of what I was going for. And I wanted to capture her strength and her character more than um, more than trying to mimic. Sure. Because um, I, 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 I don't know. It's such a thing. Like, I mean, Carrie Fisher is – princess leia no yes. no one else is I'm, I'm stepping in her shoes for these small things <laughs> i feel so lucky to be doing that but i wanted to honor the character uh, but also make it authentic to myself sure so i As felt when i yeah when i was when i was playing her but man it's just like it's the coolest i think this is like even i love american horror story and the social network but this is like my top top thing oh yeah 
there, so cool. <laughs> there's no franchise. It's the biggest franchise in the history of ever. And yeah. your Princess Leia. That's uh, come on. Come on. You're My I think you're out. got mad at me for booking this. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> he's such a Star Wars fan. He's part of like the Five of First Legion and he's oh, built right his own Saint Trooper outfit and yeah, he does a lot of charity events because he's also he's a sheriff in uh, West Palm. Um What is his name? But, uh Chris Vicara? Oh, I think I know him. Are you serious? That would I, be hilarious. I think I do. I'm also in the 501st, and we would be oh, in the really? same squad. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah, okay. I don't know his – wait, let me look and see really quick while I continue talking because he tagged me in a thing once that I think said the group info. Um, But he was like – because he loved the Dead Rising series too. And he's sure. like taking over everything I love. He's like, <laughs> I don't want to – watch star wars and then know my sister is in it that takes me out of it i'm like sorry <laughs> i mean that's fair <laughs> but he also asks for my autograph on the stuff that he buys for oh of course he i would too i know it, it cracks me up. i love him so much and it, it just it was it's really cool he he gets so excited about it too which is which is awesome that is great what a what is a recording session like for forces of destiny it's uh, it's fun, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's really surprisingly laid back in the aspect of I was so nervous my first time going in. I had no idea what to expect at all. Sure. I mean, I, I'd researched a lot, and I knew Dave Filoni, and I knew the creative team behind it, and I still – and I, I mean, I'd watched interviews, so I was like, okay, they seem nice. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know, and I was just so scared. But I went in and I actually, I recorded, the first one I recorded was with uh, Tia Sarkar in um, the uh, the Bounty Hunter episode with yeah. IG-88. So it wasn't just me in the room, which was nice. Cool. Um, and then Dave Filoni, it's so funny because I've still never actually met him in person. Uh-huh. He directs via uh, like a Skype screen, basically. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like uh, the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to play it a little more like this. But he, <laughs> he is so nice and so warm, and we just – we nerded out so hard on just not even Star Wars, but we just talked every possible thing, Disney and, and Jurassic Park and Indiana Jones and just everything, which was great. Um, but it's a really it's a really fun session where they're really open to hearing your opinion as well. And I really like when they'll ask, like, oh, do you feel like this line's working? And they really, if, if I say, oh, you know, I'm not sure, they'll be like, all right, well, let's let's figure something else out, and we'll come up with something, which I think is, I, I love that. I was kind of talking about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, it just makes you feel Part really of a creative process, which is great. But, God, the writing is so genius and so Star Wars, so authentically Star Wars. Like, 100%. That's what I love so much about it is because, like, yes – this it, the show is for everyone, but yes, of course, it's geared for kids. It's on Disney Channel. Yeah, but it doesn't feel kiddie. But it, at the same time, is very appropriate for kids, which it, it's just it, that it's that sweet spot that I love. Same. Um, and it's just been so, it's just been so cool, especially talking to people, uh, connecting with fans on Twitter who are saying that like this is how they're getting their kids into Star Wars. Yeah. Like, that is so crazy to me and just such a cool feeling like to know because for voiceover for me the thing I love so much about it is like Tara Strong and, and Grey Delisle and all those voice actresses that I look up to were my childhood right. and they're part of the reason I've wanted to do this and to know that I could be that for some kid one day is such a cool feeling and like I feel really honored and yeah really thankful. Absolutely and you're you're doing a very important service in explaining where Leia's getting her clothes. So <laughs> I, love that. I love that that's the uh, theme, but I, I mean, I've questioned it before. Right. I have too. I was like, you know, that dress that she got from the Ewoks, like yeah. that belonged to someone they ate already. Let's be oh. real, Shelby. Oh, <laughs> you never know, but probably. <laughs> <laughs> they eat people. <laughs> right. all, all comments I make are my opinion alone and do not oh, yeah. reflect. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put a buffer in front of the show for that. <laughs> All views and opinions expressed by Shelby Young are her own. <laughs> that is incredible. Do you have a favorite episode so far? I think this most recent one, uh, Bounty Hunted with yeah, with, with uh, Maz and yeah, I think. Well, it's a toss up. I mean, I love all of them, but of there's that one, and then I love um, the one that I did with AJ as Han. That was super yeah. fun. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I got to I got to record with him, and we he loves telling this story. So I'm just gonna tell it for him, so there that when go. he listens to this, he's gonna be like, "Ooh, ha ha ha, whatever." <laughs> that sounds just like him. Yeah, right. See, I'm a professional. Um, <laughs> no, he we <laughs> he had he wasn't sick. He'll have to always be like, "I wasn't sick." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> First had and foremost. Shot. I had the heat on for the first time, and I woke up with the bloodiest nose I'd ever had, and my voice <laughs> was shot, and I was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. And it's true. When he was, when I first met him, he was terrified. He was sitting there, like, chugging tea, like, oh, my God, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's going to be fine. And then I, trying to be nice, said, oh, yeah, you know, I have the heat on, too, and my, my nose is kind of stuffy as well. Maybe I'm a little, maybe I have a cold. Don't worry. I'm sure I'm not going to be my best either. Just be nice. <laughs> And then when we were in the room, he, the, everybody was saying how great it was going and whatnot. There wasn't, like, a problem, but he just out of nowhere decided to bring up how, yeah, and, you know, it's crazy because my voice is kind of shot, and she'll be sick, too. And I got <laughs> so mad at him, and I just, I, I don't even remember what I said, but I was like, way to throw me under the bus, dude. I'm not sick. Guys, I'm not sick. <laughs> and I just started going back and forth, and Dave Filoni just sits there with this, like, the smile, this like evil grin spreading across his face. And he was like, you guys are Han and Leia right now. Like this is perfect. <laughs> this is the energy. Like this is it. So it really actually helped us nail those characters. Yeah. In a but <laughs> I was that is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were just afraid I was going to leave without saying goodbye. Yeah. For whatever. That's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love what you said about the the voiceover community having like a camaraderie because obviously I follow you on social media and you're in like this group of Leia's, yeah. you know, Anna Graves and Cat uh, Tabor and like I I love that. Yeah, I I I love all of them so much and I learn so much from them every time I I get to hang out with them, um, just because they've been doing this a lot longer than I have. So I don't know if they know this, but I'm taking mental notes with every single thing they say. I'm like, oh. <laughs> You're great. All right, got that. Um, there you go. But no, it just started. I had messaged uh, or I had tweeted at Misty on Twitter when the Battlefront 2 trailer dropped because she's Leia in that. Yeah. And I just was like, from one Leia to another, like, this is amazing. Like, you're awesome. And she was really touched that a fellow voice actor had written that because it is so easy to get in that weird headspace of like, well, I could have played that role and you're taking my job and this oh, is yeah. that. I don't get like that because I feel like it, when a job is yours, it's yours. And if it's not yours, it was never yours. So just the person that got it. Mm -hmm. um, and so she came up with the idea of like, why don't we get these other women that have voiced Leia before together and have a, like a lunch, a Leia lunch. I think I coined the hashtag Leia lunch. Sweet. I do think there that. There you go. Was, I'll, but... give, I'll give it to you. It's official. <laughs> it was, <laughs> But it, but it was so fun. And God, we we talked for, I think it was like three hours that first lunch, just getting to know each other and, and sharing experiences and talking about life in general. And man, it was just, it was really, really cool. And they're such awesome, different, interesting ladies. Like everyone, like Misty is a magician. Like I had no idea what? when I first met her. Yeah, Misty Lee is a magician. She had us all come see her at the Magic Castle, which was amazing. What? She's so talented. Yeah, she's great. And then, I mean, and then her husband, I had no idea, created Harley Quinn. So that was a cool little, like, tidbit of information, too. And I got to meet him for a second, and he was lovely. He was so nice. Um, and then, like, Julie is in a rock band. Like, everybody's just so cool and has, like, such interesting life stories. And, I, I man, they're just a really rad group of ladies. That's so cool. I love that. It seems that... In, like, the voice community, there's way they're, – they're so talented. Like, they're almost too talented that they can't have an ego. It's like you can do 500 voices, but Steve Bloom is, like, the nicest man on the planet. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah, I, I, I just met him, actually, um, at a screening for uh, Last Jedi, and he was the nicest. I love that guy. Oh, man, he's so talented. Yeah, no, I every everybody I've met, I haven't had a bad run-in with any voice actor ever, and I don't, I just don't think I will, which is so nice. Yeah, it's, really it's a, nice. Because the word of mouth thing is such a, a big deal in the voiceover community, sure. you can't really be awful to work with or you're not going to get hired because everyone talks. Directors right. and, and, and writers and actors all know each other and are in the same, like, I've I found 
geeky circles, which I think is amazing. I feel like every voiceover actor, myself included, I met is such a nerd. Yeah. And it's the best thing ever. And it's like, you can't really be a mean nerd. Yeah. I mean, true. yeah, well. but that's just like, <laughs> well. <yeah. laughs> I, I don't know. I haven't met any mean nerds. That's right. yeah. Good. <laughs> like Good. A, <laughs> I search my name enough on on the internet i'll find mean nerd comments but you know doubt it, doubt <laughs> it. Not, not for shelby young definitely not <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised there's actually a big not a big group but a group of people i remember when i was young this really upsetting me and now it makes me laugh but because of that lazy town show that for some reason because i was the first girl versus the girl that went on to do the show that they all grew up watching uh-huh. they hated me just because i was first oh no like that only reason it was this really interesting thing if you search online enough and if you're like in that self-deprecating mood of like Always. i need to feel real alive you can find something. <laughs> yeah, like, they're there they're there if not email <laughs> and we'll find you some <laughs> right. but no i mean my biggest and you know it was so funny cat cat's advice when i first met her was like don't read the comments she's like someone is always going to have an opinion don't read the comments, and if you do read the comments, just know that it doesn't really mean anything. Like, sure. people are entitled to think what they want, but that doesn't affect what a great job you're doing, like, that sort of thing. And I was like, that's, A, thank you very much. B, that's great advice, and it's so true. It doesn't, it, like, I, I don't want to say people's opinions don't matter, because people's opinions, of course, matter. Sure, but, there's still an audience, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, but it shouldn't affect how you feel about yourself, because 100%. sometimes it's personal, and, <laughs> yeah. like, me though so no <laughs> that's right yeah about you get get, get out of here <laughs> well uh, so uh, one question i did like to ask uh actors specifically is there any advice that you would want to give to someone because you've done dude you've done so many different things uh so <laughs> what, what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into what you're doing um my my basic advice for every actor is to continue learning and stay in classes and never feel like you know anything really sure. <laughs> like I'm learning but never think that that's it like you've reached your potential because you haven't and you're always going to be growing and changing and as you get older you're going to be trying out and playing different characters that you couldn't have done when you were younger and that's going to take a different facet of your personality and life experience so sure. just always be open to learning never feel like you're good enough <laughs> that sounds <laughs> like you're good enough but, I mean, no. but kind of <laughs> yeah, never never feel content is my right. biggest thing um i agree with that and especially with voiceover my advice is and i've said this a few times is it is still acting first and foremost 100%. it is it is a hunt you you no matter if you are playing a badass video game character that is really grounded or playing a crazy cartoon character it still needs to be honest and truthful and from inside of you and not just a silly voice that you put on and without any emotion or, or feeling behind it for sure. Um, and again, classes, like that's where I learned that too. I listened back to some of my first voiceover auditions and they're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they're terrible. And cause, cause with voice too, something that you learn is along with that authenticity, you do need to make your voice interesting where in person you might just say something kind of flat but if you're saying it for a voiceover you need to know sometimes you go up on a line or sometimes you go down there's a musicality to it that you need to also learn which again classes will help with that sure sure uh speaking of that as well um i've seen your reels and they're actually great uh what do you think is the key to making reels like for actors and whatnot um i have my own personal taste because i make my own reels um i am on the computer way too much so i know <laughs> that way too many programs i yeah i i it's a problem honestly hey, it's but working. I, it's working <laughs> right, for, for me for for theatrical reels i never want them to be too too long because i even have a hard time sometimes and maybe this makes me sound full of myself but it's hard sometimes to pick and and pick uh, pieces that you're not going to show because you sure. might feel like this is a talent, but it's like, no, but you kind of already have that in this piece. So I like, I like to, um, make sure not to have too many similar projects. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't really, I don't really know. I like the flow of, I like doing, cause I've seen a lot of reels and they work also, but for me personally, I don't love where there's like a music intro where it like quick flashes with all these different projects. Sure. Sure. Um, and dun, dun, a lot of people, dun, dun, lot Shelby of people, Young. 
Yeah, a lot of people love that, and that's, again, just such a personal thing. But for me, I like it to be the, the more basic, the better. Like, just just the title card with maybe a little music intro that I, I think on mine right now, I pulled it from America Story. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, just show showcase your strongest moments and try to get everything that you've done in there as far as comedy, drama, whatnot. And then with a voiceover reel, also just make sure they're very different voices that you're showing on there because – if someone hears already that you can do a 30 year old Russian woman, you don't need to do it five times. Right. Uh, right. And also this is again, a personal preference because I've seen reels or I've, I've listened to demo reels where they're longer takes. I like the quick cuts sure. just to get more in there. Cause I really wanted to keep my reel under two minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, because I feel like even if someone listens to the full two minutes, that's a miracle in itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, put, Oh, that's, that's the biggest thing. Put your strongest work first. Ooh, good one. Yeah, just in case someone doesn't watch all the way through, it's the best. I like to put my strongest work first and then last usually, um, just in case they're skipping around. Oh, yeah, which they do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, nobody got time for that. Yeah, yeah I, it's always, I'm always shocked when someone was like, I listened to your whole reel. I'm like, you did? Thank you. <laughs> I feel the same way about podcasts. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I had a guy on, his name is Details. Um, and he's incredible. He's a creature performer uh, for actually all the new Star Wars movies. He's been like oh. five or six different aliens. And That's amazing. I told him, I was like, how are we on time? And he's like, oh, I'm good. I was like, all right, sweet. So we just got to talking and it's almost three hours long. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, boy. And he's like, maybe you could cut it up. I was like, God, but your stories are so good. I don't want to. I want this to be genuine. And so I just released it as is. And, like, it was one of the most listened to episodes I've got to. I was like, who is giving me three hours of your time? What is going on? Long car rides, you know? Yeah, I know. that They're all L.A. people that are in traffic. Exactly, exactly. (laughs) That's right. Speaking of time, I just realized we've been talking for over an hour. Yes. That was, that was, uh, I hope you had a good time. This was fun. That went by real fast. Yeah, no, that was super fun. Good, good. I'm I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. That is literally my job. Uh, (laughs) Where can people find you online? Um, they can find me on Twitter at Shelby underscore young. Um, and then Instagram is Shelby H young. And I, I do have a Facebook, but I just like rarely update it. Let me even see what I think it's. <sighs> Hold on. I'm so bad with this. <laughs> uh, it is Shelby Heather young uh-huh. is my Facebook page. Um, but yeah, mainly, mainly Twitter and Instagram, everything on the Facebook page is pretty much just a copy of something yeah, I posted. It's just somewhere. there to have a presence. <laughs> it's there to be there. <laughs> so, it's like my YouTube. I have YouTube, but I rarely upload anything, if at all. I think I might have like <laughs> three videos on there that are really dumb videos. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's what YouTube's for. <laughs> exactly. I'm just so glad it wasn't around when I was a little kid because I oh would have God, been tell me about so it. embarrassed. I cannot imagine being high school now with all the social medias. Right? Be, oh man. I wouldn't last. I'll tell you. I'll tell you right out. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> but that being said, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This was this was seriously so fun and awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And <laughs> Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of uh, The Interesting Podcast. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Jedi Brian. If you want to follow the show, it's at Pot of Interest on Twitter. And uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, if you wouldn't mind, go to iTunes and give it a five-star rating. That pushes us to the front of uh, the iTunes algorithm, and it helps book guests. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate you listening. Until next time, be well. <laughs>